Welcome. As some of you know, I like to throw bigger pots, like this one, or even bigger. And the way I prefer to throw them is in sections. So you throw one section, another one, put it on top, and put it together, and so on. And that way you can make really big pots without being able to handle very big chunks of clay. There is, however, one big challenge and one problem in doing this, because you have to remove and put back the pot all the time to create these sections, if you only have one wheel. So I always wanted a second wheel for sectional throwing. But buying a second wheel like this one, I got a Shimpo, or if you have a Brent or Scott, is quite expensive. But a couple of weeks ago, if you've been following this channel, you saw my review of that, I got another wheel, a Viva wheel. It's a much cheaper, much smaller, and not a strong wheel, but uh, it seems to work okay. I tested it, I will put a link to the review I did, and now I wanna see if I can use that as a secondary wheel for sectional throwing. That way I can keep my base on the same wheel, my simple wheel, the strongest wheel, and just throw the additional pieces I was to put on top on the Viva wheel, on the cheaper wheel. So that's what we're gonna to try today. I'm not gonna do a huge pot today, because today I'm just gonna test if this actually works. Uh, so I'm gonna start out with about four and a half kilo, uh, I don't know what that is in pounds, nine pounds, something like that, for the base. I'm gonna aim for like a, a slim sort of cylinder type of tall pot, maybe about 40, 50 centimeter high. On the second wheel, on the Viva wheel, I don't know for sure how much clay I can put on it. I tested it with two kilo and it actually went surprisingly good. So I'm probably gonna go with three kilo on the second section. But uh, let's just start with the first. And that is just basic throwing. I throw a normal pot, the first part of the shave, and then I will continue from there. One of the things when you do sectional throwing is um, centering. <laughs> centering is always important. But when you do uh, wheel, uh, sectional throwing, uh, when you have to put the things together, it's even more important that it doesn't wobble. Because if the first section wobbles a little bit and the next section wobbles a little bit, putting those together so they fit completely is almost impossible. So uh, you need to be a little more careful with the centering. And, uh, and keeping that centering when you, when you throw the base. Another thing that can be challenging when you do wheel, well, sectional throwing is to imagine the final form. So, because your first part, you only create the first part of the, of the pot, in this case a vase. And I want sort of a, a shape that goes out a little bit and then ends up going in. And, um, to imagine how it will look with the second section can be challenging. I know some potters that do sectional throwing, they cut out a template in cardboard or, or thin uh, wood or something, and they use that. So then they can measure the first section and see does it follow the pattern that, uh, that you aim for. I, um, I don't have a very, uh, uh, you know, predefined goal of this one. I do have an idea, but it doesn't matter if it goes a little bit off that, that idea. So I don't use a template for this. Mm -hmm. 
And as always, with uh, bigger lumps of clay like this, I think it can be a little bit challenging to see how thick the bottom is. And the easy trick, of course, is always to use a potter's needle. Just stick it in, hold your finger, and then you can see it. This is still a little bit too thick. I do want it to be relatively thick for, um, for a tall uh, pot like this, but not more than, maybe a little more than a centimeter. And of course, this also helps compress the bottom, um, which will make it less likely to crack. So let me just check again. Yeah, now it's beginning to look good. Now I've got <clears throat> almost the height I want. Um, another thing, when you do sectional throwing, it's not a big problem for me, but you can't make it too thin because the first section has to be strong enough to carry the next section. And if it's super thin, then it may collapse on you. So if you want it uh, thinner in the end, you will have to trim down the, the wall size. But um, for me, it's usually not a problem that I make it too thin. <laughs> I have more of the opposite problem, I would say. Just take out some of the water. I don't want the water down here to, um, to sit too long and soak into um, the bottom and, uh, and weaken it. So um, I always try to clean it up on the way, even though I'm probably gonna drip some more water down there. Still want to um, make sure that it's not um, too soaky. So, getting closer. <laughs> so, I think we have the basic shape now for um, the lower part. And uh, in case you end up with a top that is uh, jumping up and down a little bit, you can cut it off. Uh, in this case, it's actually okay. Um, but then you want something that is completely flat. Because if it's, again, if it's wobbling either that way or up and down, then the next section is going to get even worse. So you want some surface that is uh, uh, clean, <laughs> horizontal. Um, and so in that case, you could just, I can show you, because um, even though this is pretty good, um, just make sure that it's wet um, so um, it doesn't make any resistance. And then cut off as little as possible, keeping the needle and just... Very important that you keep it in the right position. Lean your elbow on your knee and go slowly through. And when it's through, then you can remove it. Remove as little as possible, of course, because you just want to even it out. So I'll put this aside. And now, we also did before, but now we have a completely even top. And that's important uh, to be able to, um, to mount the next section. So before we move on with the second wheel, we need to prepare this um, to be able to uh, carry the first uh, or the second <laughs> section. So there's a couple of things that uh, we have to do. 
One of them is to decide how we're going to mount the second part on the first part. You can either do it here, flat to flat. <laughs> uh, that works okay. I like to uh, uh, cut a little bit of an indent into this. So I create a groove and then I make a point on the other one and the groove and the point, or whatever you call it, they fit into each other and it helps sort of align it when I put it there. But there are many different strategies for that. But uh, I'm just going to make that groove. Before I start making my second piece, my second section, I want to measure the width that I have to have. So remember, we're going to throw it upside down. So what is on the top of the second section is going to be turned around and put on top of the first section. So the width here has to be the width of the top of the other part. So depending on how I want to end this shape, maybe I want to continue out, then it's going to have a very big base. But in this case, it's going to go straight up here and then end in. So the next part I'm going to do is going to have a shape sort of like this, but the top has to fit this top. So uh, to make that very precise, I'm using a uh, caliber. And uh, so this, I just need to adjust and I'm going to adjust it to the middle. So I know where the pointer is going to be. And this is it. So I'm going to put this aside and use it when I throw the second one. Now I'm ready to do my second section. So I moved to the other wheel, the Viva wheel that I got a few weeks ago. And it is much smaller. <clears throat> it is not as powerful as uh, the Shimbo. Uh, the Shimbo can take, I think officially it's say 20 or 40 kilos or something, but I've seen potters do sectional pots that are much bigger. But on this one, I only tested it with two kilo. That went okay, but now I have almost three kilo. I don't know <laughs> if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try. And to be honest, I'm actually gonna be <laughs> heavily surprised if it actually works. Um, this wheel doesn't come with pins for bets. Uh, but in last week's video, I showed you how I uh, drilled my own uh, bat pins into this wheel and this is the first time I'm going to add it, so that's a test as well. But um, let's see how this goes. This is a little more shaky. <laughs> It is struggling a little more, but uh, it's turning around. <laughs> this is actually quite impressing, impressive. Uh, it is a uh, $150 wheel and is handling three kilos of clay. It is struggling a little bit more, <laughs> but so far it survives. So I got it centered and uh, that's the hardest part. <laughs> because this is where most of the pressure on the wheel is. So, um, as you may notice, uh, some people notice it, I noticed it last time, there's uh, a little bit of basic noise from this wheel, but what is most annoying is it's some clicking sound. And I think it actually has to do with the splash pan. I'll have to check. It looks okay underneath. I talked to Viva about it, and they're investigating it currently. It shouldn't have this uh, clicking sound. Other people I know have this uh, Viva wheel, don't have the clicking sound. So maybe it's just minor production <coughs> error. Anyway, <coughs> for this section, we're aiming for the top to be this size. But as I'm going to um, continue this shape, 
just up a little bit and then go in. It will be smaller in the, the base, which is going to be the top. We just need to have this size at the top. So um, also, we'll take it, uh, we'll open it up all the way to the wheel head because of course it needs to have a hole in the top. <laughs> and, um, but I'm not going to remove all of it at the bottom because if it only connects to the bed with the width of the walls, it's going to be too uh, fragile, too gliding off or falling off when I turn around. So I'm actually going to leave a little more there. I will throw that uh, and even it out when I add it to the first section. So um, let's open it up and see what happens here. By the way, these bats I just love. Uh, I get them from a supplier in uh, Germany. And um, besides having a lot of, um, of uh, bats already made, he can also make special bats for you. And uh, these ones, fortunately enough, he had on stock. So now I hit the, the bat, <laughs> the wheel head, and I'm just recentering it. Got a little bit out and um, expanding it. And it is struggling. Three kilos of clay is a lot for a wheel this size with the kind of engine it have, but it's still turning around. <laughs> Not sure as it is, but it is turning. You see, yeah, I still need to get a little bit wider. So I will squeeze it in the butt and uh, I want to keep it a little bit too narrow because it's much easier to widen it up. If it gets too wide, it's almost impossible to get it into shape again. So far, it's going fine. I'm actually very impressed that uh, this uh, very small wheel, and, and some people would claim this is just a beginner's wheel, but now I'm doing sort of pro work. Uh, sectional throwing is definitely not a beginner's um, sort of uh, task. I'm aiming for a thickness of the wall that is sort of the same as the first section because, of course, I wanted the final walls to be almost the same. But let me just check again if I got it a little bit too wide here. No, I think we're good. One thing I really love about these bats is that the clay sticks really well to them and when it dries in this case i'm going to cut it off but when it dries it just naturally release so uh, it's really really uh, the best bats that i've worked with so far one mistake i often make <laughs> uh, not just when i do sectional throwing but in general is that i make it too thin right here for some reason i get it too thin here not too thin here, not too thin here, but just, you know, a couple of centimeters below. And if it's too thin here, it becomes very weak and it ends up uh, collapsing. And especially when I put it on top of the next section. So um, I've got to watch out for that. So now let's see where we are. Yeah, we need to get a little bit wider. 
but that's fine. It's always easier to get wider. <laughs> Almost there. There is, there is a little bit of wobbling. I don't know if you see it. It's very, very little. Um, but I'm thinking I'll just widen it just a little bit more and then I may cut, cut it clean. Um, just to be sure. I'm just going to cut off just a little bit here. So, like that, I could have reused that, I forgot. <laughs> now we have a completely flat top. No wobbling at all, and that is important. So now I'm just gonna make it a little more pointy. As we talked about, I want this to be pointy, so it goes into the groove that I made in um, the other part. Yeah! One millimeter. <laughs> the more precise you can make it, um, the easier it's going to be to add it to um, to the first section. And get a perfect fit. Yeah, that's a perfect fit. <laughs> so now I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to clean up the bottom a little bit. Um, I think this is truly impressive. It's three kilos of clay on a 150, 160 uh, euro wheel. <laughs> it worked. And uh, now I'm just gonna do the same thing as I did to the first section. I'm gonna dry it. I'm not gonna bore you too much with a very long drying video. <laughs> but I'm gonna dry it because this one have, of course, to uh, be strong enough for the second section to be added. But this also have to be sort of strong because if you turn this around and it's too soft, it will still like like fall back and um, it have to be stronger on this part because this have to carry that part. And usually when you throw, there's a lot more clay down here. My case too, because deliberately I wanted to have some, some um, connection with my bed. So it's actually thinner up here and that thinner part have to carry the more heavy part at the bottom, which we're gonna turn around to be the top. So this one have to dry as well. How much? <laughs> well, it's something you need to um, experiment with. It has to be dry enough to be strong, but it has to be wet enough to still be able to connect and to be able to uh, do the final shaping of your pot. So I would say soft, very soft, leather hard, not real leather hard, not as hard as it would need to be to trim, softer than that, but not as soft as it is now. So, you know, somewhere in between. <laughs> so let's try it out. So now I think it's dried enough. I will, as I did with the first section, just let it spin and settle a little bit. I don't know if it actually helps, but I have a feeling that if you let the clay just breathe a little bit after you um, you heat it up and just settle, it seems to work for me. I don't know. It will probably work without two, but I need some coffee anyway. So uh, I'll be right back in a second. Now I'm ready to take the second pot and put it on top of the first section. Before I do that, I just want to scratch uh, the connecting parts, so this part and this part a little bit and put a little bit of slip on it to make sure that they glue together. You can use anything to scratch. I have this wonderful little tool that I use to uh, scratch it with and uh, just turn it around lightly. Just mess up the surface a little bit. That's going to give it a bit of grip and um, make sure that the two parts glue together. Something like this. And I'm just going to add a little bit of the slip here. 
I think I have just a little bit of that mud. <laughs> Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other one. I'm going to move my pockets. In case it dried out just a little bit too much, just adding a little bit of water will make it stick better. So, now we're ready to turn this one upside down and put it on top of the other one. So, um, carefully remove it. And when you turn it around, I think I said this many times before, I'm going to say it again. Don't just tip it slowly because then it's going to bend and it won't fit. So I'm just going to throw it up and turn it around in one go. So one, two, three, hop, and a stick. <laughs> and now we have to position it very precisely. Yeah. And I think this looks okay. Turning it around. It looks good. So I usually give it just a few knocks, just to make sure that it's in the groove. So there's no... Well, what, what, <laughs> one important thing is to make sure you don't get any, uh, any air holes, uh, air bubbles in here. You want it to connect fully. So that looks good. And now I will liberate it from the bed. And the way I do that is I put my chest to the bed and I cut it loose, because if I don't um, uh, do that and I start cutting, I will bend the whole uh, pot. And of course, I don't want that. <laughs> I'm trying not to push my uh, pot sideways. So, now we're ready to connect them perfectly and throw the last part of the pot. The different techniques you can use to make sure that these uh, two sections are perfectly uh, uh, massaged together, <laughs> because in the end you want those two sections to feel like one pot. It is a weak point. If it's not well connected, this is where it's going to break when you fry it. So I usually take a rip and just go over it like this. And then um, I will do the same thing on the inside. And sometimes you need to uh, hold your hand on the inside, depending on how stiff it is, so you don't push it in and push it out of uh, shape. Usually, when I do this, I had the first section removed, throw the second section, remove it, put the first one back, and, and moving that back and forward, of course, increase the risk of, uh, of uh, pushing it a little bit out of shape and uh, make it more wobbly. And um, this I love already. It makes my life so much easier. <laughs> so now it's sort of better connected on the outside. I will do the same thing on the inside, but I will have to wait until I open it up a little more. Before I do anything, I want to wet uh, this part up here because I don't want to accidentally have my arm uh, you know, hold on to it or, and, and, and sort of push it out of uh, position. So now my arm will glide better here. And now I will start to um, just make it smooth and bend into each other, blend into each other. I also use my finger on the inside to push the groove and the pointer into one. Mm -hmm. 
And now you can always already begin to see that it's it almost I I can't almost see where it connected. So that's a good first step. For these larger pots, it can sometimes be a good idea to have a longer uh, rib. I have this one that I made myself. <laughs> um, seems to work okay. So, it's beginning to look like a pot. Still a little bit strange up here. I think I want to have it go out a little more before I, I let it go in. So, um, for that, I still need it to be a little more with here. And try not to do too much at a time. Don't push it too much because you can easily push it out of shape. Sometimes when you work in sections like this, there's either too much clay where you connect it or there's too little. I usually have a little bit too much and uh, then it will bulb out either on the outside or the inside, depending on which way you push it. It's no problem. If there's too much, I usually, for a slim one like this, I push it to the outside and I trim it away. I with trim it away. In this case, it's actually almost perfect. There's no bulb on the inside, no bulb on the outside. So I was lucky. <laughs> now, of course, we have a lot of clay up here. And that was <laughs> on purpose because I wanted to have enough uh, for, uh, for my section to actually stick to the bed. If I made it just the size of the wall, there was a risk it would glide off or um, yeah, or, or not connect when I turn it around. So now we have a lot of clay here that we want, of course, to uh, expand. We could also just cut it off, but I want to use the clay. So I'm just um, trying to squeeze this and basically just pull it like you would with any other piece of, um, of clay. So I'm trying to even out the wall here and then um, and pull a little bit of height out of it. Of course, depending on how well it was positioned and how well it was cut off, you may end up with a very wobbly top. But again, just like we did with the with the sections, it's quite easy to um, to cut it off. Sometimes you need to, to stand up. <laughs> so, now we got the wall sort of evened out. It's actually not so wobbly at the top, but uh, I may still end up cutting cutting it uh, but it's not too wobbly for me to work on so still want to expand it just a little bit of course expanding the lower part uh, as it has dried a little bit more is of course uh, difficult you have to be very careful when you do that can add a little bit of moist to the clay again, but it is more stiff and it's more limited how much you can expand that. And with a big pot like this, and you're working so close to it, it's difficult sometimes to see the shape. So move back a little bit or use a mirror. I have my camera, <laughs> I can use that too, um, to get like a, a more complete picture of um, the shape of your pot. 
I will, in the end, cut uh, the foot a little slimmer. I deliberately leave a lot of clay down here for a tall pot like this. Tall pot like this. It was, was very slim, very thin. Uh, it would just be too, um, too fragile <laughs> or too un, unstable. Uh, um, so um, I, I'd rather keep a little bit too much clay down there and then um, trim it off later. Another thing you have to keep in mind is how big is your kiln? <laughs> I have a 190 liter Nibetam and it's about 65. But I want to keep it a little less than that. There's also a button shelf. So um, I got maybe 63 or something. It will shrink a little bit during drying, but not so much. Lots of the shrinking is in the bisque fire and even a little more at the glaze fire. So um, I have that limit to um, to think about too. So at least now you see that it looks like one pot or a pot that was thrown out of one piece of clay. It doesn't look like two sections and that's in any case what we're aiming for. So, it's beginning to look like a pot. <laughs> I think I want a little more shoulders. So, we'll have to work on that. But I just want to make sure that the lower part of my pot is the way I want it and that the connection inside is good. And I think it looks like that. So, I'm um, just going to raise the shoulder a little bit. I think, you know, it's spinning now, considering the fact that it's made of two pieces and it is sort of a tall pot, I think it's very little wobbling. And this is so little that when I stop the wheel, nobody's gonna notice that. So let's, for the fun of it, I wasn't aiming at something specific, but it is about 50 centimeter tall. It's not a super tall pot, but I think it's a nice size. It's just, a little bit too big to be a table uh, vase. I think it's more like a floor vase, but anyway. It's always difficult to know when to stop. A few times I stopped too late and I destroyed a really good pot. And I think this uh, is actually nice now. It's got a basic good shape. I will thin it a little bit here, so it will look a little more elegant, a little more dynamic. And uh, I think uh, the rest of it will be done in trimming. So all in all, <laughs> I think it was a success uh, using two wheels. It's definitely a lot easier than having to move the pot back and forward. And to my surprise, I don't know, yeah, sort of surprise, the river wheel was actually able to handle three kilos of clay quite well. So instead of buying two sort of expensive, I don't think they're too expensive, but you know, a simple, a simple wheel, Brent or Scott, they cost $1,500, $2,000. I think it's a fair price. It's a very good wheel, but the Viva wheel costs about 10% of that. So you can buy 10 of them at <laughs> the same price of a simple. I don't need 10. But having that as a second wheel for secondary sections on section throwing is so much easier. Uh, so it's not just a beginner's wheel, but also something you can use in a professional workshop in addition to the stronger wheel you have to do your main throwing on. So um, 
I'm very happy with this experiment. So if you like this, please subscribe, share, write a comment if you have something to say, and come back next Sunday. I will have a new video released about 5 p.m. Central European time. <clears throat> if I make it in time, I usually do. <laughs> so until then, I just hope you have a really good day. Bye-bye. Thank you.